Hello and welcome back. To, yes, back again. Welcome to new listeners and old. Welcome. Welcome into the house <laughs> that is you listeners. Where you over? <laughs> oh, Success. Aye, yeah, of course. Enjoyment. Aye, of course. Spread the word. You to know? be honest to people. I'll just spread the word and spread the legs. Okay, that's... <laughs> oh, well, okay. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll live with that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Live, di- <laughs> live by the pussy, die by the pussy. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well. It works for some. Yes. <laughs> Not me. This was your uh, daily reminder that uh, I'm gay. Because <laughs> every podcast, I have to emphasise it to people. Yeah, well, you never know. So, Mario. Yes, James. This has been a wee... A wee, a wee bit late. I think. Yeah, I think this it's been a long time come. For maybe this, this is where we should have started to really set the mood for what we what, what we aim to do when we review a shit film. Uh, today's film, I think, w- we'll sum up right away, has been pretty shit. Uh, it has points. It has some good points, which I'm actually, actually kind of surprised with, uh, considering I hadn't seen it since it came out in the cinema or DVD, and it's been sitting... Gathering dust somewhere in my flat, so exactly yes. what it deserves to do. And if you haven't guessed by now, well, no, or by the title of the show, we are reviewing Fantastic Four. Yes, Fanful Stick. Well, they actually don't refer to themselves as Fantastic Four, so should we just call it a blank? Uh, we can call the whole thing a right off. To be quite honest, like that's what this. This is what I think. Uh, everybody who was involved in this film thought, and do you know something? I feel worse for the crew because they just have to, you know, they just have to pay the bills, and their names are certainly attached to it. <laughs> like, well, that is the thing. Uh, did I enjoy it? We'll get to that. But let's start off with the story, James. Oh yeah, please take it away. So I can't bring myself to describe the story. Well, I'll describe the end, because I like oh. uh, the, the end is the best bit. Aye, uh, I'll definitely say that. Uh, yeah, so the movie starts out, young Reed Richards is in school, and he's talking about, oh, I'm going to be a scientist, blah, blah, I'm going to do this, oh, this, I've got a transporter at home, uh, everyone makes fun of him, because he's a little geeky boy that we all were all those years ago. Weren't, weren't we all geeky before, James? Well, I, w- I was the quite... As geeky well, not, as 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 I mean, not he, on that level. Well, I mean, he was smart. Oh, do you know, I was, I was a fucking idiot to be quite honest with you. Uh, moderately intelligent. Got maybe f- fours in my standard grades. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'm it's average. Fine. I'm average. You are not average, mate. I'm larger than life. But I'm so s- is my cock. No, I'm getting on. 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 Don't. It's not that kind of podcast. So yeah, it's fan, um, <laughs> fan, fan four stick. Fantastic four. Uh, yeah, so we start off with a nerdy Reed Richards, and then, you know, basically, y- y- you know, we find out that he gets bullied, but we also find out that he's trying to create a portal to a parallel universe. Yes, which well, isn't but, w- but we doesn't actually know where, if you, uh, in the second scene, where they're at the little science fair and stuff, they're like, oh, we don't know where it transports to, maybe China or whatever, uh, but look, look at this, and it's like... Uh, we've got Franklin Richards, and he comes up. Uh, no, Franklin Storm, sorry. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh no, it's actually an inter- interdimensional portal." And he's like, "Oh, because that's normal. Cool. That's normal to have at your science fair." I know. Like, are you? Oh, hold on, I'm going to transport your plane to a port, a different dimension, cause reasons. Yeah, which is actually kind of scary that the government have not arrested Reed Richards by this point of time or taken him into like make something for them, you know? Or why no one at his school is saying, do you know what, Reed? I think maybe you've wi- you've thought a bit too much into this. I think you went a bit far. I know, like, this teleporter, you know, that can be kind of dangerous, you know, if you thought about the ramifications, that you could open up something here and something comes through. No, you stupid specky prick. Oh, well, oh, wow. I wear glasses. <laughs> wow. <laughs> by this point, he's like 13, right? Calm yourself right down, right? The poor boy gets bullied enough, you don't have to be adding to it. Anyway, so we're <laughs> moving on uh, to Reed Richards, who... Well, no, it's not Reed, it's actually Ben, and we yes. see him in a sort of abusive family. Well, his mum looks after him, but his brother gives him so much shit. Yes. Um, which kind of is the, the prelude to Ben growing up to be 
a sort of protector. Yeah. Like he, he doesn't he doesn't want to harm people. And and I'm gonna say it flat out, Ben Grimm is the only good character in this. Ouch. Good hearted character. Yeah. Because they're all fucking cocks, like they're all fucking dicks, every single one of them, and you know they get their comeuppets for it, which I totally agree with. So just getting all the filler, we kind of see the Ben and Reed grown up. Yeah, the relationship of them. Yeah, we the, see a bit can, of that. You can grow. see that they've obviously been building this uh, teleporter for so many years, uh, like. Uh, upgrading it and stuff to what they get newer things and whatever and <laughs> just so to, to be honest to the, 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 the movie is a lot of fluff in it at the start like uh, really a lot of fluff yeah it's a lot of build up to this portal that can take people to a parallel universe which we'll get to later yeah uh, because it's actually quite important uh, yeah uh, so we <laughs> see them kind of grown up now they've kind of grew up together they're probably I'd say about late 16, 17 maybe. I would go as far as to say maybe 18, 19. Because, I mean, I mean, Reed's well, smart. I'm saying, I'm saying Reed's like super smart, so he's probably maybe like skipped a couple of years. Probably. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, we'll give him that, right. So, yeah, I'm going to say within the region of like late teens, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, they're working, they're, Reed is now officially working for the, the Storms yeah, yeah. at the Baxter yeah. building. Which uh, isn't the home of the Fantastic Four. No, 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 no. Just a bit, th- bit thrown in there. Just go, oh, the Baxter Building's here. But uh, no, it doesn't belong to them. Nope. Uh, which is a nice little nod to the sort of traditional sort of Fantastic Four. Ah, and the origins and everything. Yeah, because the Baxter Building is like one of probably the most notable safe houses of a group of superheroes in the Marvel world. So that's nice. So we, we go into the Baxter building, we see that they're, they're, they're trying to build this portal again on a bigger scale, and now Reed's intelligence has funding behind it, which is always dangerous. Yeah, money and brains equals chaos. Money and brains equals chaos, and again, we'll get to that. Uh, and this is the scene where we're sort of intru- uh, introduced to Sue and Johnny. Yes, the the... The relationship that's the I'd say probably the best relationship in the movie. Yeah, I mean, Sue is very much f- as the character of Sue. It's how I expect Sue to be played. She's she's not someone who just stands by and takes someone else's shit. Like even Johnny's. Like yeah, Johnny's just a bit of a kind of loud mouth, like uh, show off. Kinda, yeah, you know. he's like, I'm amazing, I'm beautiful, I'm perfect. It's just, I don't like that. Even when Chris Evans done it, I didn't like it. I know it's his character, but the boy needs a slap. But that's just it. So Sue kind of keeps him grounded, which I quite like, because they stayed kind of true to her character in terms of how she responds to certain things. Like She literally just will not stand for anybody's bullshit. And I like that. That's probably one of the few things that this film gets right. The characters and how they act are, can be flimsy quite a lot. A lot of the dialogue's really throw away and flimsy. It's not substantial. You really, you're, you, before I tell you at the end of this, just to avoid this film completely, you could watch it with the sound off and enjoy it <laughs> so much more because the dialogue is so cringy. It's like, you know when a, a five-year-old makes like a little shitty painting and, our, yeah. and their mum and dad put it in the fridge just because... Just because they made it, like, not because they like it. Yeah. So good. yeah, that's that's exactly what this film is, and I'm sorry <laughs> to offend anybody who was involved in it. And guess, do you know what? I get it. You just have to pay bills. It's fine. We all make mistakes. <laughs> they can't all be belters, is what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, we're kind of getting the point of the film now where they're, they're trying to build this portal to a parallel universe, and they succeed. Yes. After a lot of fluff, they actually succeed. Yeah, which they could have really cut out because from we get at the start of the movie, the, the science fair, like, oh, we've been like working on trying to do something or other. So like they cracked it when all their super brains couldn't do it. So it's like, well, if you've done all that, then really all you need is just like to do a couple of things to make this machine work. Well that's that's the impression I get, but yeah, well, yes, it this seems um, a lot grander in scale. And well, this is another thing that I think is wrong with the film, uh, because 
things don't happen till they need to. I was talking to my mate Daryl, who says like Doctor Who. And uh, uh, well, and my my mate Dan as well, and they were saying it's like doc- things are like Doctor Who. Like the Doctor won't remember something until he has to. The Doctor won't do something until he has to. Like he won't remember important information until he has to. That's the kind of thing I'm saying. This film is like that, and I mean, Reed is effect- Reed effectively made the portal. He just didn't know where it went, which to me is the sort of how how would you calculate that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's again something this film does all across the board. It's everything that happens. It's like, why did that happen? And why did that happen like that? Things happen too fast. Things happen like, oh well, we should have. We 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 just know how to do it now. And yeah. there's no real exposition. Time should have went more into that. This film is a lot of fluff, and I can't express that enough. Like it's just so much fluff. But yeah, th- so they eventually get the portal working. But they don't know where it goes. Yeah, and which is kind of dangerous. Seeing as you send a, f- a few folk over, you know, it's like they send fucking teenagers. Yes, they send fucking children. Oh, you just well, well, images. technically well, they, they don't send, the send it. They hijack it themselves, don't they? they so d- yeah, they do. So you can understand, like they're like, oh my god, we want to be the, like the first. We want to be uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and this and is stuff. part of um, Reed Richards' arrogance. Yes, which he's a cock. He is a cock, and he's a cock in the comics, but Reed Richards is not an idiot. Like, Reed Richards would never do that. Like, he would never throw himself into that situation. No, he'd throw his kids Just first. to prove that he was right. Yeah, he, well, he would, yeah. <laughs> of course he would. Of course he would. Because they can handle it. Um, so they go, th- they go through the port. They convince um, Victor, uh, and they convince... Is, he, is his name Victor? Mm, they yeah. convince Ben, but Victor goes with them. Yeah. Yeah. So they convince... Uh, they they basically convinced the whole team to go along with uh, Doom, pre Doom, and he, a lot of background on Doom. Doom is a bit of a loner in this film. He doesn't get on with people, but he has a bit of a fancy for Sue Storm. Ha <laughs> ha! Nothing changes. And he's the kid. That, do you know something? I'm gonna live. He's the guy I feel sorry for the most. Do you know what I mean? Because he really? was he, well, he didn't really want to. Do you know what I mean? Like he's sort of like. He wants to because he wants to be sort of... Yeah, oh he wants God, to be closer that. to Sue. He wants to kind of show off a little, you know. That, that's always been... Uh, he's nervous, he's angry, doom. he's no used to it. He's, he's a bit of a show-off just to well, be a show-off and be the one to go, oh, done it first. Yeah, that's exactly it. The, the, the doom that we're used to would absolutely 100% go, fuck it, I'm doing it first. This film gives us a sort of pre-doom that's sort of like quite angsty, not sure what he wants to do, which is a different take on him, but it's not really what I can, (laughs) it's not exactly what I would expect of Baron Von Doom, who would just fucking kill you as quick as look at you, or in this film both, but yeah, so they go in to, which is not explicitly named the negative zone, but we know it's the negative zone. Yeah, because you know they call that's it planet that's the only really place that they can really use into. It. They call it Planet Z. Yeah. Why not just call it the negative zone? That's what it is. I know. Like, oh, hold on, this universe is negative atoms from ours. Oh, really? Boom. Oh, and it takes a portal to get there. What else does that in the comic books? Oh, the negative zone. That's where they throw people like to just. Fuck it, just go. <laughs> just get out of your sight. So, that annoyed me because, you know, they they, they they subtly tried to say that it was the negative zone when, you know, it was just well, planning. But I suppose, I suppose they were just kind of finding it. I don't think they really would have named it the negative zone by that yeah. point. But it's that whole, the subtlety of it. It's like, oh, this is negative atoms and everything's, uh, yeah, okay. Again, it's one of those things of, oh, it just happens because it happens. We just know these things. And what happens when they go in, Mario? <sighs> well, shit goes wrong. As Everything always. goes wrong. Uh, the planet's pure, like, crumbling around them. And then Victor falls in. They f- grab a hold of him. And then they drop him. And then they get to f- well, They don't really drop him. Well, it's more, it's, it's more it falls from their grasp. Yeah, so uh, part they, of are, they are. I mean, part they of are tied to part of his 
angst towards the world, which comes later. Well, partly like when I was watching it, felt like well, he didn't want Reed to let go of him. Oh, that of course. Was, that was that was that is, that's a given. But partly it's like sort of implied that he lets go. Mm. It, it's sort of like implied that something's telling him to stay there, which we'll get to later. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, he he harbors a lot of hatred for Mister Richards, which is the norm. And yeah, they let him go, so he's basically fucked. And then they, Ben and Reed manage to escape. So they're dicks. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, Sue and Johnny are sort of holding the fort, but it's it's when they come back through the portal that the the basically the power giving, fucking shock blast, fucking I don't know, gives them powers. Radiation, we'll say radiation. We'll say negative ra- particles. Radiation. We'll say negative particles. Negative radiation. Is negative radiation even radiation? My fucking mind is blown. I know. Inception. Oh my god, I'm done. Fucking kill me. Yeah, so, <coughs> that's probably the first 30 minutes. We've got plenty more to go. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. And this is where the real fluff starts. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you would think when these people get their powers, we're going to see a lot of fucking action. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of it. Uh, no, that doesn't happen at all, does it? We see no. a wee bit. No, no, no. There's nothing really there. The so basically what happens after... Because, I mean, it kind of has this sort of... We it kind of goes into the future a bit. And I can't remember explicitly how long it is. I think it's like just under a year. Well, first... Or has they're it n- first they're in the base. Uh, Reed's doped up. He manages to break out his cha- uh, shackles and stuff. Yeah, and he can hear Ben just going, Reed! Reed! Where are you? And then you've got, like, let's be honest, but can we, because like, he gets out of there, right? And he's like, he's like it's just Reed swinging his flaccid body around the place because he can't control <laughs> this, which again, we'll get to later. Yeah. That's a common theme. Yeah, we'll but here's the thing, later. he's going through that, uh, that air vent. Why wasn't his flaccid cock pure dragging about? Well, it's a well-known fact, Miles Taylor does not have a big cock. And, um, <laughs> is it a well-known it's known fact? fact? It's a known <laughs> fact now. Put it out there. I hope I never ever meet him because, like, <laughs> just known like my luck. Slap. No, known my luck. You'll like have seen this and be like, "Bish what?" <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and I'm just like, oh dear, <laughs> not this again. <laughs> oh, fuck me, like you know. I hope I'm never famous. <laughs> like, we'll keep on doing this podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I might imagine that. Like, I mean, all the actors that we took the piss right out of, like, that would be awesome. Just a walk of shame. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, why isn't his cock pure hanging about? Is that no. the question that really bugged you? Uh, kind of. Like, he can, can't control his arms, but he can control his cock. Mm. Like, he can't, like, it takes a lot of effort for him to pull his arms in, and you see his legs pure stretched out. So does that mean that his cock's like pure bang on a fucking <laughs> and a shackle on its own? Look, I'm gonna level you, Mario. Right, I I'm running on like maybe <laughs> forty five minutes to an hour sleep. Right, I don't need this. Sleep is like, for the weak. I must be weak then. You <laughs> like, are a weak I bitch. Admit, I admit that I'm a weak bitch then because I fucking love my sleep. It's <laughs> right. Just because I've got a stable, a strong and stable head on my shoulders. Like. Oh, don't start strong and stable, you little fuck. Sorry. Anyway, back to the film. Yes. Uh, yes. So the Reed escapes. Yes. Uh, we can and leave him Ben there, which has major, major, major knock-on effects down the line from the movie because the way that Ben, every time he sees him, he just goes, "You're going to run away now." Like. It, see, it's clearly thing. affected him because like Ben came from a family, well, not a family, but he, he, he was his brother should be looking out for Ben when he's a, ch- a kid, and it's that abandonment thing, it's that whole thing that yeah. he sees Reed as family and he sees him as a brother, and Reed left him. Yep. And Ben didn't understand what was happening to him. Like he stu- you, you can imagine when they were kids, and Reed was grown up the kind of geek, and Ben was his friend. That he stuck by him through thick and thin, well, through all this time, and then in his first sign of need, Reed runs to fuck. So that's that's yeah. It's I, I can imagine that with the whole Ben, the ben was his protector. Yeah. Ben looked after him. Ben looked after him, and that this one time when Ben needed help, Reed fucked off. Yeah, 
And yeah, okay, let's put it down to shock. Like, if my body turned flaccid, I wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. If, if my body turned to rock, I would certainly not be pleased. It's um, it's one of these things, and it's one of the, actually the better points of the film because it's just about it makes it feel like it's not about the Fantastic Four and more about these two people who have been friends for such a long time because they genuinely needed each other. And when Ben needs Reed to be smart and to explain what's going on. Reed can't and goes away, like and just it completely abandons him. Ben Grimm in this film is literally the probably the best done character. He yeah. he acts the way I would expect Ben Grimm to act. He, he harbors a grudge. He's angry at everything that's going on. He's not the ever loving thing that we saw in the previous Fantastic Four movies. But even then, that was a more like in the first film you've seen a lot of that rage and that anger. But in the second films and that he's he's accepted it. And he has fun loving because that's what Ben Grimm does to money. That's the tragic thing about him. Like he tries he, he just learns to cope because he has to. And that's quite important. And this obviously in the previous films you had that whole story arc where he could he, he was turned back into his former self. And there was that challenge of if I go back and to save them, this will be me forever. We w- I don't think we'd ever get that story here. Oh no, definitely <laughs> We're not. We're definitely not getting a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Justice is done. Oh. Ben, ben Grimm is probably literally the better of the four, in my opinion. He's not a dick. He doesn't try and say that he's better than everyone else. And I genuinely, he's just a guy who's suffering a lot and it's this tragedy that he'll never really be himself again. And that's that's quite dark. That's why I like Ben Grimm's stories. While he's the most probably unbelievable of the Fantastic Four, he's still the the most human. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd go with that. And I like that. So, yeah, B- Ben's story and his the rage that he ends up harboring for Reed is very much justified. And it is. It's probably one of the highlights of the film. Of course, the dialogue gets a bit cheesy again. It's that whole, oh, you're going to run away again sort of thing. And he keeps Yeah, he keeps you. on going, it which, you know, which the, f- the first time is a given because it's the first time they've seen each other since the whole uh, base escape and Reed running away. So the first time I can understand. But once shit starts going down, Reed's there. So there, there's no need to, for him to bring that up again. But it does kind of put put across the point of this guy is absolutely filled with rage and anger towards his Which he former wasn't. best friend, you know? But that's the thing. He was never filled with rage and anger. He was very calm and collected. And this thing, horrible thing happens to him. And he's just like, why? Because he is. He, he's probably the most pure of heart character. I mean, going backwards, you know, when we're introduced to Victor, they all bully him. They all treat him like utter shit, apart from Ben. Like Ben just treats him like a normal guy. It just does. It stays out of it and doesn't anything. But like even Sue and like, because Victor obviously has feelings for Sue. Sue completely shoots him down in the worst way possible. Like treats him like shit. Johnny treats him like shit, and Reed especially treats him like shit. But again, we'll get to it. But Doom has every right to be fucking angry at them. Like in my opinion, and so does Ben. Yeah, they're the two probably most tragic characters in this. But yeah, so after this, we kind of, we, we reconvene maybe, was it a year later? Something yeah. Something like that? Yeah, about. And uh, we find out that Sue, Johnny, and Ben are with the government. The government are holding them captive and making them do missions, yeah. basically. Because, why not? Yeah, you know, like push them to the limits, find out what they're useful for. And this is the thing that I don't like about Johnny, because Johnny completely embraces it. He's like, oh, this is great. And it's like, and Sue does put the argument up of, well, we're not free, we're not us, you know, we are just, we're just weapons. And I like that because, th- again, it's a very Sue Storm thing to say. Yeah. You know, she's the moral compass of the team, really, who slaps everything back down to reality. How that character is brought along is probably the best, one of, again, one of the highlights of the film. But then again, everything else is it, just ruined by fluff and horrible wig changes, and I just well, let's get let's get right into the most important part of the movie, the part that matters, the last like maybe twenty thirty minutes. 
Yeah, okay, let's skip all the fluff. They find Doom, uh, they go back through the portal, they find Doom, they bring him back. But the world's changed, they've noticed it. They're like, oh, hold on, it's different. Readings are different. Then they find a heat signature, the Doom's walking towards him. So they bring him back, they start looking at him. They, they say the containment suit's so stuck on him now, and whatever, he's changed. He's got a green glow is. underneath his skin, he's almost... M- Foot, head to toe metal from the looks of it. Yeah. And then he starts going fucking bananas, which is pretty justified. The, the like, is justified and is the most villainous thing you can ever see from any character under the name Doctor Fucking Doom. Obviously, has, take he, out the fucking nerd. I feel like, even though I think he looks like utter garbage. And I would happily replace him because he looks so cheap and I'm rushed. Sh- and I'm I'm sure that there's a version of Doctor Doom out there that is identical to that. I've seen it somewhere. I'm not sure where, but it's a smooth skinned metallic organic metal covering of him. I'm sure there is something out there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. The the look of him is very different, which <laughs> is good because, in my opinion, they should be doing something different other than just copying what was previous you know going going from uh, a little tangent right now the spider-man movies the sam raimi ones going from organic webs to uh, web shooters and stuff and the amazing spider-man and then in the new one that's coming out spider-man homecoming you're got the suit that's going to have all the web combinations and stuff so i'm all for that so like do something different which has happened in the comics and make it work, make it its own thing. So I'm glad that they've went for a different looking feel for Doctor Doom. I would maybe say the voice does need a little changing, maybe a bit. The deeper. voice doesn't seem angry enough. It's still, it's still the I would same maybe guy. S- I, I would maybe say it's more emotionless. Like he's more he's void more of like emotion. Ultron. Yeah, he's like yeah, a robot. Yeah, he's like yeah. a machine. He just says things. And I will say, Doom has some of the best dialogue. Well, they kept the best stuff for fucking Doom. Yeah, of course. Because, uh, I mean, Doom, as the character of Doom, is literally probably in it for 20 15? minutes. 15, yeah, 15 20, 20, minutes. 20 minutes. So, it's like, it's not like the original, the sort of original films where Doom was portrayed as the underlying villain, and then obviously in the second one you had yeah. Galactus. And inverted commas. But, yeah, it's like in the first film, Doom was always the underarching villain. And in this, it's like you don't see him for the whole film, pretty much, until he comes yeah. back. And he and he literally, like, he goes to town. Like, he oh. tidies up. Like, <laughs> he shows, like, this is, he has the power of Doom. The power that I expected Doom to have. He looks at someone and blows their fucking head off. That is, like... That is dangerous. That like, is villainous. Right that's, there. that's like... like he, he, he doesn't even think... He just looks at somebody, head explodes. Like, it's just... Yeah, what movie is it? Is it Scanners? Like, they look at someone's head... No, they look at... Whatever character it is, looks at someone, their head just goes... Pff. I think it's Scanners. It may be. I mean, like... Like, it, that. that's a downright evilness. Like, there is nothing good about him. He's like... He looks menacing as fuck. Like, he's a dick. And then he's just walking through the base... Blowing people's brains out the fucking back of their head. Yeah, uh, and it's just... It, it just works, because, I mean, in the comics, I've always seen... Everybody's scared of Doom. Everybody. Oh, aye. Everybody is terrified. Even Ultron is terrified of Doom, and fucking yeah. Ultron's a machine. Like, you don't fuck with Doom, because Doom will fuck you up. Like, Loki tries to get away with it, but Doom fucking kicks his gun in. Like, you know, it's it's like... He, he's so savvy, and he's so like, no, I'm not dealing with your shit. And... While this version of him doesn't do that and have that attitude, he has the power. Oh, yeah. He has the Doom power. I expected Doom in a film to have that. You know, Doom uses, like, sort of mystical and tech. Yeah, he's. I would say that he's the best that Marvel has to offer, like, for your, like, Doctor Strange and Iron Man in one, but a downright evil bastard. Yeah, and... It, it works, you know, like, he's walking through that corridor, he's not even thinking about it, like, they're trying to shoot him, they can't shoot him, fucking blows their heads off, it's, 
it's, it's terrifying. Which I kind of like because uh, everybody, everyone else, they've had maybe a slight experience of the radiation, whatever it is, that gives them the powers. Look but at Doom. He's got metal skin. He's He's got some kind of telekinetic power that can blow brains up, you know, and like blow walls and down. Uh, block, block bullets. fucking bullets, like. Blocks bullets but it's got down like a like kind of force field. It's not. It's not like the same thing because you don't see a kind of like green glow in their head or something. So yeah, he's, there, there's multiple powers there. So you could put that down to the fact that he's been there longer, that he's adapted, that maybe he's. Uh, well, he experimented that with well, his like powers he says in different the ways. Saved them. Yes, the planet tested and them. This, this goes back to what I'm saying about the whole thing where, like, maybe something was telling him to fall. Like, it's almost like the planet was calling to him because he openly says that the planet kept him alive. Like, he needed, he needs to be on the planet. That's why he wants to go back because he, if he's away from it for too long, I think it like would it weaken him certainly, but it, it could kill him. Like, he's dependent on that planet, mm. which I don't like because it's not Doom. Doom. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just doesn't really fit the character. The best part of Doom in this is the power that he has because it's terrifying. Now, on to my next point, when he fights the Fantastic Four, why the fuck is he not blowing their fucking brains out? They have powers. Mm, yeah. But I, I, I could maybe put it down to something like the X-Men where... Uh, is it where where family members of other people that have got powers, the the powers don't work fully on them. Like if uh, Scott Summers and say Cable try and go in a fight against each other, their powers aren't going to work against each other. Yeah, like that that so maybe because be our powers came from the same power source that it's kind of yeah dampened a little. Yeah, you know? they can they can put up a fight. I mean. Doom doesn't use any of the powers that he shows in that hallway scene. Now, that hallway scene says to me, shit's gone down. Yeah. That's the power that Doom has. He's going to use that. But in the last fight, he's, like, levitating rocks and throwing it at them. And he's Well, he's it's telekinesis. If, if, yeah. If you go down to it, his power to stop bullets could be telekinesis to s- stop them coming. Uh, brain blowing out the back of their heads. You know, he's focusing his power to just... Right on the brain, it's gonna go out the back of the head. Yeah, breaking down the wall, telekinesis. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah. He's he's still using that power, but they've not really explained what his power is. So I think there might be mul- He's got multiple powers there. Of course, and uh, the real Doom does. Yes. You know he can do pretty much anything, and I like that, and I certainly enjoy where the, the I kind of enjoyed the build up of him. But again, spoilers at this point. Nope, yeah, spoilers if you've got to this point so far and you don't know, well, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, Doom, Doom gets killed. And this is pissing me off. Why would you kill Doom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the whole point of Doom is that he is the main enemy of the Fantastic Four and Galactus. Doom would square up to Galactus. <laughs> like Aye, with a, a bat and eyelid, he's going to kick his cunt in just because why? I can take this giant. It's like, storm back, boys. I've got it covered. Like, Why Why are we not getting real Baron Von Doom? Why are we not getting proper Latveria? It's a lot to set up. Yeah. But I couldn't see And they've, and they've wiped it away in the first film. Much like any 90% of superhero movies they kill off the, the main villain right away. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a thing that annoys me about them so much. It's like, how can you condense 40, 50, 60 plus years of a character's history into one movie and then wipe them out and then go, oh, pff, we are done with that character. We are moving on to the next story. Yeah, wait there, what? You've, you've, you've got rid of your main villain. That's like in the first X-Men movie. Say Wolverine actually got close enough to Magneto and just stabbed him right in the chest. So X-Men 2, you know, Magneto's not really a part of X-Men 2. X-Men 3, you know, name Magneto for the Brotherhood. Sorted. Some no, no no, big fight on the Golden Gate Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge isn't destroyed. But the whole point, of it, but that's what I'm saying, the whole point of those kind of villains is to come back. Yeah. You know, they, they, they come back because they're... 
Magneto is ultimately more powerful than Wolverine. Magneto yes. is ultimately, arguably, more powerful than Xavier. Green Goblin yeah. as well in Spider-Man. Green Goblin isn't necessarily powerful without his tech. Yeah, but he can well, put he's up a got fight. the Goblin serum. No, yeah, he can put up a fight. He's super strength. Like, do you know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like they kill off these characters in such a way. And I mean, it just, to me, it feels like they could use them so much more. Well, I've I've got a wee theory that they could have done if they were to ever do a sequel for this, which <laughs> I highly doubt now. But the way that they've supercharged them, uh, well, well, I'll say it once we get to the point in the movie. So, Doom goes back to the planet Z and he's opened up a portal which is going to chew through Earth, pull it through to his planet, his his new home planet, and basically turn it into power for himself and for his planet. So, long story short, Fantastic Four, they try and take him on one by one. They fail miserably because, you know, they work better as a team. That good old American feeling. And then, once they start working as a team... They stop him, chuck him through the disintegrator thing, and that's it. But, yes, my theory. They've supercharged him. He's got so much power in him. And then the portal that's destroying parts of Earth falls th- falls down, and he goes through it. And my theory is, he's so powerful now that once his atoms have been dispersed all over planet Z and they've went back home... He's managed to reconstitute himself and form a new body. Maybe his old human body. Maybe a more realistic or more recognisable doom. Maybe, I mean... And then from there... Don't hold the FF2. to this. FF42. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's never happening. I'm telling you right now. It's never happening. Happen. If it happens, I'm going to have a serious word with somebody. If it happens, I might need I just to see about cutting off my testicles. I just think that, like, so basically that's the end of the film. Oh, well, yes. sorry, let's talk about the cringiest line in the fucking film. Oh, they James, how can we take that away from you? On oh, you go. No, 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 absolutely not, because this scene fucking kills me. So if you end the film, you want to end on a happy note. You want to end on a good note. You want to end on a point of, oh, let's do it. But you don't want to overplay it. You know, you've had your time for cheesiness. We don't want to overplay it. Yes. And... Basically, the Fantastic Four say the government say we might still work with you, we'll, 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 and they say yeah, but and the Fantastic Four basically say yeah, but it's going to be on our terms. And the government are like, well, what if we say no? And then Ben Grimm threatens them, and then so they get a big facility where they can do everything they want. It's basically the Baxter Building, but not the Baxter I would, Building. I would say it's more Ultimate Fantastic Four. It's more like the Avengers Institute. Yeah, that's yeah, what it looks yeah, it like. Looked like it. It looked like the Avengers Institute. And they're trying to figure out what they're going to call themselves and they hit it with a bunch of shit names. And then Ben Grimm says, oh, this is all looking fantastic. And then Reed Richards goes, oh, say that again. And Ben says it again. And they're like, guys, I've got it. And just before he says it, it's like, it's it's the Avengers Assemble thing. Yeah. They never, ever explicitly say Avengers Assemble in the films. But it's like, they just cut it completely. And that's the, that's the kind of thing that really gets me so it just cuts to fantastic form that's where it ends yeah it's so cheesy now i might take five minutes just to talk about everything that's wrong with this film if you would just, just five minutes if you would care to oh, dabble with me i will dabble okay so first thing yes that fucking wig yeah which i never noticed the consistent uh, watching hair changes consistent hair changes right it bothers the life out of me right now, i can live with a fucking Reed Richards that looks like fucking Slender Man. I can live with that. <laughs> but I will not sit and look at her fucking wig changes. Because at one point, her hair's like darker and sort of like brunettish, gone into blonde. And then when she's so strong, it's like pure blonde. Now, I think there might be a thing in that because it's something to do with her powers. But it's the wig. The wig is fucking horrible. It changes all the fucking time and I can't deal with it. Continuity is a problem in this yes. film. Secondly, oh, in, my, in my top five of shit things with this film... Reed Richards. Yes. Oh, so Reed Richards has been away for a year. He's built things for his arms to keep his... Yes, like, yes, to yes. To keep his, his fucking condom limbs. They've <laughs> fucking gone everywhere, <laughs> right? And um, that's fine. That's quite a smart thing. Yeah, right? you know, that's okay. you know that's that, okay. that shows that he's it means learning he with stuff, it, you know. Right? 
But at the end of the film, Doom destroys all of that stuff. Yes. And he becomes big, flaccid fucking Slender Man again. He doesn't know what to do. And it takes him literally the space of 60 seconds to pull himself together. Literally pull himself together and control it without the harness. And I was like, you were away for a year, son. Like, I, I get this whole thing. I, I don't like this thing in films. Like, unless it's really, really justifiable. Yeah. I don't like this thing that in serious points of crisis, people can just do amazing things, right? I just... I don't or fantastic things. Oh, fuck off. Fuck right off. This is not the time. Third thing I hate about this fucking uh, Mario. Bef- before <laughs> you get into your third thing, I could maybe put it down to that he's back on Planet Z where he got his powers and maybe the radiation's kind of maybe con- helping him control it, but they don't explain it so it doesn't happen. Fuck you. No, no, no. I don't, I'm not buying that bullshit. I'm not buying that fucking yeah. bullshit. I'll tell you why I'm not buying that why? fucking bullshit. Because if that was the case, yes. he was on Planet Z for a very, very long time before this happened. When those harnesses came off, he fucking fell like a fucking deep fried Mars bar in a fucking <laughs> shopping mall. Right? He fucking fell to the ground and he couldn't fit day fuck all. And then when Doom's threatening to kill his fucking bird, what does he do? Oh, I'm going to pull everything together. I'm going to do this because I'm fucking amazing. I'm fantastic. I can do what I want. Maybe, maybe the collars were inhibiting the radiation or something. But I'm just coming up with bullshit. Stop fucking coming up with bullshit, <laughs> right? It's a fucking flaw in the system, right? It would have taken him more than 60 seconds to get himself together. He was away for a year. That's what he should have been fucking yes. doing. He should have been doing his fucking homework and he didn't. Stop backing them up. Right. Anyway, the third thing that I hear about this film. Third. Um, oh. 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 Oh, there's loads. Oh. I could do this all day. The writing. The writing is piss fucking poor. Like, I don't know how many lines I've seen in this film where I was just like, that is utter cheese. Like, no one would actually say that. When, when you read a script, sometimes you read a script and you'll go, that person wouldn't say that from what I'm going on. That person wouldn't act like that. That person wouldn't do this, that, blah, 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 blah. And this script does that. Like this, this script, this screenplay was written by three people. Yep. Three fucking people. And three people thought, this is good. This is all right. Now, maybe the film was originally going to be fantastic. Maybe it was going to be stellar. It had a lot of production problems. Yeah, you know, that that was one of the major Josh things. Josh Trank being the main problem, like, let's not deny it. But if the script was always like that, and it just underwent some changes, the script was fucked for the beginning. The dial, how the actors bring the dialogue along, it's just so cheap and cheesy and not right. It feels weird. The characters who have the best lines are Doom, Ben Grimm, even though he repeats some of that stuff quite a lot. And occasionally something Sue says. And it's a shame because Sue is the leading female. She should really stand out. She should be the one that kind of whips these guys into shape. Sue is effectively the leader if Reed isn't the leader. Yeah. That is effectively how this goes. But it doesn't feel like she gets that time to shine and that really bothers me. I really wanted more from that. Especially someone who I would say is as recognisable as Anna Kendrick's. Like, she's... She's I, 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 w- I would say that she's probably the lead actor as far as like kind of in terms of like stature and stature yeah. and yeah yeah absolutely and I don't know why she fucking signed up to this maybe the script was good at some point Do you Ma- know what I mean? maybe the script was good and then when they cut it up into what the final product was it what, just mince? fell on its head because that's what this is this is fucking mince. I get it, like, it was completely fucking ripped apart and put back together again, like Frankenstein's monster, but it's literally just... When people say that it was a mess, you sit there and go, ah, oh, it's just them slating another superhero for a minute. But no, it, it's genuinely the truth. It's honestly, like, you couldn't cover this up. You couldn't pay someone to lie about this. It's a mess. It's, it has its points. But the points aren't backed up with anything. It's like every the, the old saying: every villain is as every every film is as good as its villain. Yep. The villain kind of runs the show, even if you don't see them all the time. But this is like everything else. Like the villain was great. I I really liked him in this. Yeah, I, 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 I felt like I felt it was good as I didn't the like pre Doom other other movies. But I like I like Doom. He had power. He had fucking anger. He was gone for it. He was doing what he was doing. 
Did he die fairly easily? Yeah. Yeah. Much like they, easy. they never really done anything to him. Well, that's the thing. They're saying that they say individually he could kick our asses, but we're together so we can beat him. And they, 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 they beat him like that. Yeah. There's no it's real not fight. Like, mm, they, they, they don't really have a chance to gel as a team outside of them. They don't even so talk to each other. Yeah. They don't even talk to each other. They don't say what's the plan. They just like that, thing this, and this that is the first like villain that they faced. This is a thing. This is like they've not worked together as a team before. They're thrown in at the deep end on a major scale. You could you could maybe put down that uh, Ben, Sue and Johnny have worked as a team prior to this. Uh, working with the government and whatever, yeah, but so it's just Reed but then yeah, just oh, Reed, w- Reed mean, was at scale to he's taking leadership and it's unearned. Like he's saying, we're going to do this, and it's like you you haven't earned that right. You've been away for a year. You you ditched everybody just so you wouldn't be in the fucking shit. It just yeah. When I first watched this, I kind of did like Reed, but now watching it again, I'm like, no, I really don't like him. I think he's just. I don't think, and I don't even think it's Miles Taylor's fault. It's the script. The script yeah. completely fails Reed because while Reed is a total dick, he's not stupid. He's not somebody who just rushes into things, and he's a hero at the end of the day. He would jump. He, he would put himself at risk to save somebody. But again, he's earned that. Even in the original films, you felt like he earned that. You felt yeah. like he had earned the right to be the leader, because. When everything, when all the shit happened to him, he took responsibility for it. He felt terrible for yeah, it. Yeah, he tried to fix Ben. He you tried to fix Ben. You don't get anything in this. You don't get anything. Nobody's trying to help anybody. It's just comforting them. Like, oh, this is just it. I know, mate, you've got no dick now. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, rock hard. There's a rock uh. hard. There's a rock hard joke in there, but I'll leave it. But, um, but that's the thing. It's, it's totally unearned. Everything is unearned in this film. Like you're expected to root for this team of people who, at the start of the film, were fucking assholes to the villain. Yeah. I totally was sitting there going, "Do you know what? Don't fuck them up." I, I can't be honest. <laughs> fuck them up so there's no excuse for a sequel. Um. So yeah, it's it, everything just seems ungenuine. It seems unearned. It just. It, it just doesn't feel like the film gels well at all. It just is like one big hot mess. And maybe maybe in, in, in a later cut there was, you know, a version where they, there was more time for that. But up until this, there's nothing. Things just happen because they have to happen. And there's nothing really that benefits it, in my opinion. Yeah, like, if I remember yeah. right, there was a point when, before the movie came out, that... Uh, Josh Trank said, or someone close to him said that, oh, there's a cut of this movie that will never now see the light of day because of all of the shit that's came uh, following this. So I do kind of feel bad that way. If if it was uh, post-editing, people sticking their oars in, wanting to go, no, no, let, let's do it this way. Well, I would like to see way. it. I would like to see it because... Uh, as much as I'd, I, I rate Josh Trank because of Chronicle, Chronicle yeah. is a oh, great oh, movie. Chronicle was like the best non-superhero movie in the last maybe five years, ten year, easy. Like of this, of this sort of these past two decades, because it was it reinvented it. It was like a found footage film, but yeah. it was about it was like about people who go alien powers. That was interesting because you were just following this one guy who was a lot like Doom. Yeah, exactly. he was he was angry. People didn't it was, like it was, him. He was a nice wee guy, but kind of creepy. And then th- things started People going wrong. People treated him wrong. like shit, and he became angrier. People treated him like he was weird. And well, he was. It's like, what would you do if you had power, basically? Ah, you well, that's the thing. You'd either be a dick or a good guy. Exactly. And that's the sort of thing. Chronicle was quite innovative. It reinvented. It done something different. It it made a found footage film that wasn't horror. Yeah, uh, it made a found footage film that wasn't like supposed to be like a mini sort of cheap documentary. It was, it was a guy talking about his life, which ended up leading to disastrous consequences. So why not? Like I think it totally was. And when when I heard Josh Trank was going to be on this, I was like, I think it may be in good hands. Well, I think a lot of people thought that as well. But then, uh, I mean, Josh work. Trank does say there's a lot of studio things and there's been a lot of weird studio shit going on you know Disney have fired the fucking Han Solo directors Disney have fucking done a lot fucking other places have taken like 
DC's a big fucking thing for it. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the studio coming in going, mm, nah, this isn't working for us. And studios need to lay the fuck off. I know they're paying the money for it, but if they want to make their money back, trust the director. If the director fucks up, the director fucks up. Don't work with them again. Yeah. Cut all ties. End of. But you've got to, g- if, you, if you give someone a job, let them see it through. See Because I would love to see Josh Trank's supposed version of this. I would like to see it. I think everyone would like to, because at the end of the day, it's... I don't think it will change the acting. I don't think it will do much, to be honest. The acting, it, it wouldn't fix the horrible acting. It wouldn't fix the... It might fix some fix some plot things. It might fix some of that. That, that I could understand, I would like. But it's not going to fix the, the bad acting. It's not going to fix the bad continuity. It's just how it is. So in my opinion, I just don't think this film is very good. Yeah. Like, look, her hair is pure blonde. Yeah, yeah. And then in the previous scenes, it wasn't. Like, look. Yeah, that's, yeah, you kind of got a point. I did actually think at some points it was a bit browny blonde. And, uh, and then it just goes pure. No, yeah. maybe I think we have powers. But the, the Sue Storm in the original films and the comic, her hair never changes. Yeah. And it don't and explain, that, like, as far oh, as the I'm more concerned. you use your powers, the more your hair lightens. Um, which would be brilliant for me, because I'd need to dye my fucking roots. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, if you ask me, I think the film's just... It feels lazy. It felt like Fox just set people up to fail, because they had to make something. Because the way the rights system works is if they don't make... If they don't use the rights within a certain amount of time, then it reverts it back, back to Marvel. And where I think they would actually have done a grand job with this. So yeah, overall, uh, it's a pretty piss poor film. Yeah, it doesn't do much. The best uh, thing about it's doom at the end. Uh, and special effects. Let's dive into that very briefly. I think they let it down. I, f- I felt everything Sue's except Sue's uh, except Ben Grimm. Was actually pretty decent. Ben Grimm was good. Um, Sue's was good. It yeah, doesn't take yeah. much for Sue. Johnny, Johnny same. just looks fake. Yeah. I, I think that's always going to be a bit of bother. Like, the the last... Uh, if they had the last m- main Marvel movie with Iron Man, they've definitely ironed, no pun intended, ironed out the kinks on making the Iron Man suit look real. Uh, looking fake, sorry. It looks more real. So... <laughs> Maybe a second movie would have been better for the effects team. They'd know what they're doing a little bit better and stuff instead of just I think what makes this film suffer is a lack of communication among everyone. I don't think anybody knew what they were doing. Or maybe they did and then someone stuck their oar in and maybe. wrecked it, mate. I mean, I, I don't criticise any of the film crew because it's hard work to make a film. And sometimes you work hard and you get a film and people just don't like it. But when a, a film is so deliberately bad, you feel bad for the people involved because you're like, their names are attached to this, yeah, and they they were only doing a job. Do you know what I mean? And that's probably the worst thing because I mean everybody thinks it's just the actors and the and the director that get disappointed. It's the fucking it's everybody involved because they all put hard work in to make well, something and to deliver something. Especially think of this: if the filming crew and stuff probably going, oh look, we're working for Fox, like. Fox have got X Men. Look how many X Men movies they've done. All right, this is our second attempt. Fantastic Four and whatever. How successful that is. Oh, you know, oh, Deadpool, like oh, oh my god, we could be like onto the next big superhero franchise. Like we are, we are like ready to go here. We could, we could have like four, five movies down the line. We're doing all these stories, and then someone somewhere has fucked it royally. Like I really th- think that the had something really good here like it does feel like kind of two two different movies uh joined together is suffering from the suicide squad syndrome where the first half and the second half are different in itself you know like the last half feels like almost a horror movie with doom walking through the corridors and stuff and everything leading up to that. That whole scene just kind of bothers me, because I love that scene. I think that scene is perfect. It, in 30 seconds, it demonstrates just how much damage Doom could do. Yeah, to to normal people. To normal people. And then they just dispose of him so quickly. I it's know. like, Doom is not that character. Doom sh- would have got away for that. Like, Doom would have found a way out of that. Oh, aye. 
but it's because of this idea that he's younger, he's not quite as savvy, he's just, and I don't, that's why I don't like the younger cast. Yeah. They should just stick to the actual origins, yeah. Yeah, I, th- this is, that's where I feel this is more kind of the ultimate Fantastic Four. It's a younger cast of people to set up a franchise, you know, kind of, because I think, I think Marvel kind of went, oh, hold on, we've got Robert Downey Jr., who they kind of didn't want for Iron Man, and then, they, because he's older, but ca- can you really imagine anyone other than Robert Downey Jr. being Iron Man? No, not personally, but just like I can't imagine anybody else being Captain America. Yeah. It's, th- they're so in my head, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're so in my head, and I couldn't imagine any other, like, whenever Robert Downey Jr. says, I'm going to leave, I'm just like, I just, who are they going to replace him with? Because they can't replace him with another Tony Stark, it nope. has to be a new character altogether. Yep. And this is why I'm saying that, you know, moving into the MCU a bit, this is why I'm saying that Infinity War might be the prelude to the Young Avengers. Yeah. To the next stage, basically. And I think that would be interesting because I do have this theory that Wiccan and his brother are going to be made from the reality stone mm-hmm. because Wiccan yeah. has the powers to warp reality. Oh, and what colour is the reality stone? It's red. And I think if they do that, the c- they are kind of setting themselves up to continue, but with a completely new cast, completely new motivations... You know, a younger cast who are dealing with modern day contemporary social issues, stuff like that, and you're you're rebooting the Avengers, yeah, and still continuing it with new people and a new outlook, which would be very interesting. Bring the old cast back, you know, have them there as mentors. It would be interesting. Spider Man can even be part of it if he wants, if Sony allow it. It's it's just that the the MCU can't go on forever, as you know. No, nope. but like I say. It's like the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four are not made to be older. No. They're made to be... They're not made to be younger. They're made to be older. And that's why I just didn't resonate with me. Because they're young and they're stupid and they're ambitious, which is what a lot of young people are like. But I've never, ever, ever seen the Fantastic... The Fantastic Four are the smartest people in the MCU, effectively. You know, if anybody's got a problem that's above them, they go to the Fantastic Four, then the Fantastic Four go, right, okay, we'll sort, we'll sort it out. Come back next week and we'll see, we'll see where, where we are. It's... Y- you couldn't imagine anybody going to them for help. No. And and also, the way at the end, they just hold the gov- government ransom, basically. Like, oh, we saved the Earth, so you are going to do all of this for us. And if not, Ben Grimm, Mm. Come on, come on! That that isn't superhero like. That's actually villainous. What the Fantastic Four would have done in that case is say, "No, we'll do what we fuck." Uh, I oh, you don't want our backing? Oh, 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 okay. We are gonna start off somewhere else, and, and we'll, you can we'll just get try them. and stop us. But you know, bye. Like you know, it's as it's sort of vigilante. Like it's, but again. It, it kind of works because they're getting the rain back for the government oh, yeah. who used them for a year and ch- hunted Reed them for a year. It's it w- it works, but it's 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 still how the dialogue's delivered, how it's all brought across. It's very cheesy. It's very cheap. It's very not Fantastic Four. I'm I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan of the Fantastic Four. I'm not big on them, but I know when they're done right and I know when they're done wrong. And they were certainly done wrong in this film. No matter what they were trying to do, it just didn't work. And in my opinion, that's part of the reason why it failed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, the reason why people say stick to the source material is because people like the source material. It's going to be a problem, I think, maybe with Netflix's Punisher, because they've given him a perm, and I think they're going the whole eighties action hero route with them. Which I can't. I I, I will admit, I loved the Punisher in season two of Daredevil. Oh yeah, he was modern. He was angry. He was very Thomas Jane. Yep, but slightly darker. He went that bit further. And well, let's be honest. Thomas Jane, the the most extreme he went was stick a ice lolly in someone's back and smoking a steak behind them. What what did Punisher do in Daredevil season two? He murdered a lot of people in jail. When he was outnumbered. Killed, he fucking murdered them. Killed a child trafficker. He killed a lot of people in jail. He killed a lot of the hand. And he 
practically just killed everybody he came into contact with. And you know something? That's fine. That's the Punisher. That's the Punisher. In a nutshell. And do you know something? It goes back to that old saying. People are like, oh, the Punisher, he's just not relatable. But he goes the step further. He um, goes where no one else goes. It's a matter of opinion. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a matter of opinion and perspective. Like Fantastic Four, they don't do much in this film. This no, film. apart from beat one villain once. That's it. In such an easy way. It just feels I know. so easy. and it, it, it disrespects Doom, in my opinion. Yeah, like at this point, we're imagining Doom to be omnipotent and able to stop this because he constructed this, the spires holding this portal. So how can he stop it? Or teleport himself away. Yeah. And that that that's it to a T. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that... I mean, they've said that they want to do another Fantastic Four, but they want to aim it directly at kids. Yeah, which is going to be dangerous because... But it's further pulling it back. It's really not yeah. right back. Is it going to be the kid Fantastic Four? Do you know what I mean? Well, Franklin and Val... Uh, is it Valerie? Yeah, I think that's the names. Yeah. That's like, the kids. Yeah, so... Like, I would, I, it would, it would be maybe different. Like, maybe like Spy Kids almost. Yeah, it would be different. Yeah. And it would be a lot cheesier. Oh, but it would have to be. But I think the best thing folks can do is just sell the rights back. But what, don't what? even sell it, just go take it. We're losing money. But on to the subject of money. See how I joined that on there? <laughs> this is my favourite part of the show because after listening to James rant and destroy this, <sighs> I get a little bit of revenge. So, James, the production budget for Fantastic Four was estimated $120 million. Now, you get three chances, and th- only three chances to guess a right. It made taken. something like 30 grand, didn't it? <laughs> it, made, it made far <laughs> less like, than that. It, it, it is, it, is that your first guess? 30 I, grand? No. 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 Higher or lower? <laughs> Come, on, higher 30, or lower. 30 Come on, grand. 30 grand. 30 grand. Come on, higher, of course. All right, okay. It doesn't deserve any It doesn't even <laughs> deserve 30 grand, in my <laughs> opinion. Uh, whoever put 130... 120 estimated. 100, whoever put that in, it's a fucking psychopath. Like, that is, like we, could, we could, you know, sort some serious shit out with that money. Um, <coughs> oh. 200... No. 500,000. Higher. Fuck me. Oh, we're talking in the millions, aren't we? We could possibly oh. be into the millions. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, say um I never get this right. Um You've you know, so James, you have never actually got this right. And Chris and his uh first one with me, just him and me alone, he got it right on his second or third try. But he but look Chris looks up this stuff like I no, don't. I think he's just a like a brainiac. I think we're gonna have to deal with him sooner or later. <laughs> I am brainiac. Okay, so phone down, phone down. No, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm not on my phone. Right, what is the budget? <laughs> yeah, dirty, <laughs> yeah, dirty bastard. I tried cheating there um, in plain sight because I yes. Uh, uh, Fifteen million. You ready? You ready? One hundred and sixty-seven point nine million. So it actually made money. It made money. It made money. Yes. Oh my god! (laughs) Listen, no. (laughs) Yep, it actually made money. How much? How much money then? Like estimated about forty-seven million, so about thirty-three percent. That's actually not bad. Doesn't I've seen worse it? movies get a sequel. It doesn't deserve it. No, stop it. <laughs> get but it. In I the didn't. Bin. Con- listen, I listen. didn't contribute to the money. Listen, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no happening. <laughs> that can't be right. I yeah, that that's that right. According to, uh, hold on for my sources. It is Box Office Mojo, and they are very right all the time. My Christ. I know, it made 30-odd 30, uh, 30 percent. Why people? 
What's wrong with people? I think everybody just kind of went to see it because a lot of this film kind of be a shit as everybody's making it. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Oh my god, that is not okay. Uh, like, I'm sure that uh, the Ed Norton Hulk probably made more money than this and we're still waiting on another Hulk movie. Like, I'm sure the Thor movies... No, I'm not. I'm striking that there because that's that's an insult to the Let's Thor movies. Let's not go into it. Yeah. I, do you know what? I'm actually getting unwell talking about this. <laughs> so, uh, so what would James? You yeah. Oh, you dick. Mm-hmm. What would I rate it? I enjoyed the last half of the movie. The first half was fluff. The first half of the movie was fluff. The whole thing was fluff. Watching uh, for the second time, I realise a lot. A little points that you raised after I watched it the first time. So and I and I like you said I, you got a feel for the cast and the crew. They did put their heart and souls into it for someone to fuck it up. So but then again this is the finished product so I will give this a three no no I'll give it a fantastic four out of ten. I give it a fantastic fuck all, Mario. That's what I get. <laughs> nah, three. Three out of ten. I'm rating it fuck all. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like the Doom hallway scene, which is but that's thirty seconds of like an hour and Yeah, mate, mate. Movie, that's so. that's like the stroking before the blowing. Like pfft. And even then the blowing didn't blowing even your load. It was just tickling the foreplay. Aye. After tickling that, the it's... foreplay beforehand and then just like ah See unless I'm seeing didn't completely fuck them up, I'm not interested in Well we technically did. He oh, took out about we... ten guys in the one shot. I no no I mean the fantastic for what? Oh, what? F- oh, uh, yeah. Destroying them. Doom yeah. can kick fuck out of all of them together. Yeah, of course. And he does for like a brief 10 seconds. Yeah. And then reads like, oh man, I've got to do something about Dash, man, because I was a pure dick for the first half of this film. So, no, I do not rate this film at all. I think okay. this film is horrible. The, the best bit is the 30 seconds when Doom is fucking killing everybody because that Doom. I want see when watching this. I want Doom to look me in the eyes and blow my fucking brains out. Like <laughs> it was, it was purely because I related to everybody who was dying. And do you know what? See if everybody who died in that hallway scene, they they had the best way out. No other way. <laughs> they, they were the lucky ones. They were spared this film. I can't, I can't stand the dialogue. I can't stand the script. I can't stand the acting. The acting is piss poor. Don't even get me started. And the best bit, happily, is the villain. But the villains... Where they kill off. Who they kill off almost instantly. And who... W- had the power that I wanted to see, but not the look. Yeah. I want to see Baron Doom. Yeah. I want to see big, bad boy Doom who will fucking kill and not be killed. That's what I want. He should be the Magneto of the Fantastic Four. Yeah, he always should always be, always be there. But, like I said... Doing this would be like in the X-Men movie where Wolverine kills off Magneto, which, you know, takes away a lot of fodder for the later movies. Hell, even Days of Future Past. That Magneto plays a role in that. If Wolverine killed him in the first movie, then none of that would happen. The villain is always Sauron. Yeah. It's always Sauron. Yeah. If you kill Sauron after the first film, who would you fight? Yeah, true. Who's the main villain? True. Who's everybody scared to? The Orcs? Aye, everybody's of course scared of the Orcs. They're ugly fuckers. But Sauron is the ma- the lord of all evil. Oh, aye. You couldn't kill him off in the first film. That's basically what I'm saying. Victor Von Doom is the Fantastic Four Sauron. And you can't kill him off. You just can't. Unless you're doing like a trilogy of films and you want to kill him off at the end, that's fine. Tie it up nicely. But not in the first film. Because I expect to see more of them. And see, to be honest, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot. Because realistically, what great Fantastic Four villains are there? Apart from Doom and Galactus. Uh, Tinkerer, uh, what's the one with the big kind of brain? And the leader? The, no, not the leader. He's, uh, is it something like Diablo? He wears kind of like a green-black costume. Is that not the leader? No, there is. Hold on. Oh, yeah, okay, so... Marvel and DC also have an El Diablo. Yeah, which I've just of learned. course. They've got Captain Marvels and everyone, you know. Samesies. Well, on that note. Yes, on that note, we have spoke about this for too long. I'm away to I've, I've frankly myself with I've a throat. I've given more time than it deserves, to be quite honest. Yeah. I'll blow my brains out. You do that. I want Doom I'll, to. I'll sh- string myself up with this cord. Oh, that's what I want. I want Doom to blow me. My brains out, of <laughs> course. Um, that'd be great. Yep, so if you've enjoyed this like we have, as you can tell by our 
worn out voices and our over exaggerated tones of suicide then please rate, review and subscribe to us. You can find us on Facebook at Glaswegian Geeks and Twitter at Glaswegian Geeks. You can listen to our stuff on SoundCloud, just have a wee search for Glaswegian Geeks. And we are on iTunes under Glaswegian Geeks. And and have a wee search on YouTube for us, just type in Glaswegian Geeks. We've got some video content there, we'll have more up in the next couple of weeks, be sure of that. And all our stuff is on there for all your needs. And also, James, please sign off, mate. I can't talk anymore. This is your mandatory requirement to buy a t-shirt from Ripped Apparel. If you use our code Glaswegian Geeks at the checkout, you will get 10% off and you'll be helping us out, which would be fantastic. Anyway, on that note, guys, geek out and uh, don't watch this film. It is horrible. You will be giving money to a lost cause and you don't want to do that. So, yeah. Geek out, everyone. Bye.